Hey everyone, this is Brian from the Tennis IQ Podcast. Josh and I hope that you're enjoying the content and discussions that we put out week after week. If you'd like to support the podcast and help us to continue to produce quality episodes, visit our Patreon page at patreon.com slash tennis IQ podcast slash membership. Currently, we have two tiers of support, $3 per month and $7 per month. So again, our Patreon page is patreon.com slash tennis IQ podcast slash membership. Thank you so much. And now, on to the show. Hello and welcome to the Tennis IQ Podcast. I'm Josh Berger. And I'm Brian Lomax. And today we are going to discuss a listener suggestion um, relative to playing in backdraws. So this question, or really suggestion for topic, came from uh, Julie Davidson. She and her husband run an academy in Virginia. Um, And she wanted to know about how players can maintain intensity um, and motivation and care uh, to play at a high level in, in back draws after losing in the main draw and then going into a consolation or, or a back draw. And, you know, as, as Julie noted, you know, this is an issue uh, for many players for, for various reasons that we can get into, Josh. And I think both you and I have had experience with players who at some point have lost in, in the main draw and have had uh, maybe mixed feelings or experiences or maybe even some of our students have been very good about uh, you know approaches to the backdrop um and so today we want to address this this particular topic really from the perspective of okay what are some of the barriers that players may be facing when when they are when they've lost in the main draw and they're now going into the consolation um and we can maybe poke some holes in some of those because i think not all of those are necessarily legitimate reasons then we'll talk more about the benefits, incentives to play the back draw, and then um, I think you know a preparation plan for how we should approach tournaments and maybe make this more of our standard operating procedure, so that you know we're getting the maximum value out of the the tournament experience, right? So, so Josh, let's start off with um, you know the issue itself and some of the. Um, the barriers that players may face when they have lost in the tournament, whether it's a first or a second round. Uh, certainly some tournaments offer full feed in uh, all the way up through the quarterfinals. If you're playing, at least in the United States, uh, some of the bigger ones like the L1 and L2 tournaments, the level one, level twos offer that. Uh, others may offer it at more regional uh, levels. Um, and then there might just be a voluntar- voluntarily uh, volunteering voluntary backdrop in which players uh, you know pledge to play and then there'll, there'll be one or two matches after that so you know in your experience what do you what do you see as some of the uh, barriers for players who have lost in the main draw for then going into the consolation and, and being able to bring their best there yeah I think there's a couple big things I think pride can be one of them um, somebody perceives you know, m- maybe they watch the pros on TV and they see, okay, when my favorite player loses or when, when the people I watch on TV, you know, the, the ATP, WTA players lose, they're, they're done. The, the, the tournament ends. And yes, there are some exceptions. Maybe we think about the Olympics where there's a third and fourth place match. Um, but in general, you lose and you're out. Um, and... I think for, for some players, it's a matter of pride um, to almost like, okay, I, I lost and like either like they feel like they don't deserve to keep playing or they don't want to, you know, stay out there and, and play another match. And, and I think oftentimes it, it also is that they're, they're so upset about what has just happened. They're upset that they've lost the match. They haven't put it behind them and therefore they're, they don't want to go out there and play again. So I think that, I think pride is a piece of it. I think, you know, being upset or the emotions from the match before is a piece of it. Um, you know, for some people, it might be that they're exhausted from, you know, the match or the previous matches that they've had up to that point. 
Um, but I think it, it really is a, first of all, it's a great, I think it's a really important topic and I'm glad that, that, you know, that this was asked of us because um, I, I think in any region in the U S certainly, and I'm sure it's true in, you know, internationally as well, um, this, this takes place. And I, I think different, you know, different regions have taken different approaches to that. I know there's been different rules that have come up um, in recent years, but um, yeah, it's, it, it definitely is a, a huge issue where people will get into the backdrop and the amount of withdrawals and retirements during that period of time compared to the main draw, it's, it's generally, mul you know, multiple times more. Um, and I think, you know, and I, I think a, another piece of it, and I feel like we're just, I'm just kind of scratching the surface on some of these reasons, but I think another reason is people per being protective of the rating or ranking, uh, more more UTR rating rather than ranking, because, you know, with ranking, it's more things to gain in terms of, you know, you there are some ranking points to be had in these matches, but I, I feel like sometimes oftentimes players are protective of their UTR ratings in these moments and they don't want to, maybe they've already lost. They don't want to lose again, especially maybe to a lower rated player. And so, you know, backing out or withdrawing is almost like a convenient, convenient alternative, a convenient way out in that moment for them. Yeah, I totally agree. I think um, whether that the pride thing, you know, however that factors in, I think, um, just the disappointment leads to some perhaps loss of motivation for the backdraw. Um, and part of the reason for that, I think, Josh, is that maybe it's between parents and coaches, but the backdraw hasn't been promoted as meaningful. Right? Oh, it's just the backdraw. It's just consolation, as if it's just sort of the place where losers go. And, you know, until we change that, that's, you know, it could be a struggle with that. And I think... Because of all that, because it's not considered meaningful, then there's less emotional investment going into it. Um, yeah, it could be tired, but uh, you know, as even Julie Davidson pointed out in her email, if that player was still in the main draw, he or she would probably play. Where in the back draw, they're not. So, you know, t then the tiredness isn't really the the problem. It's really more the motivation and, and not perceiving any, I think, benefit to it. And as you said, UTR, if that's one of your concerns, then you're really going to more see this as a threat rather than an opportunity. Although, what's really stopping you from improving your UTR in this, if, especially if you win a couple of matches? Who knows, right? Um, so you know, we tend to look at the negative side of that. Um, so I think that all of that kind of together really um, gets in the way for players to, to be uh, as invested in this as we would hope they would be. You know, you and I have talked many times about really what it means to be competitive, the most important version of who we are, right? And, you know, when we're concerned about UTR, we're not concerned with the most important version of who we are, right? We're concerned with who we are right now rather than who we are, who we're becoming. Um, so I think those, those are all things that are, that get in the way. You're right. Uh, you know, at least in the United States, there's been some, uh, rules put in place to try to, uh, discourage people from dropping out of consolation draws, especially once they volunteer to play in them. Um, and, uh, that might be suspension points or maybe ranking points. Um, there are different things that are being used there. Um, so hopefully we see, you know, more, uh, compliance with that. So, um, if we then shift now to, you know, going to what are some of the reasons we should play? What are some incentives? Um, what are your thoughts on, on that? Why? If you were trying to sell the backdrop to sell consolation to a group of players and a group of parents, where, where might you start? Yeah. Um, I, I think I think probably the the first point I would make is that it's another chance to get a match in and to you know and, I, and we there's a lot of benefits to playing matches. There's benefits in terms of playing practice matches. There's benefits in terms of you know playing 
official tournament matches. And we know that, you know, official matches are tougher for a number of reasons. There's more pressure. People can see the results. There's obviously rating. You know, it, it impacts your rating. It impacts your USTA ranking. Um, there's, you know, the, if there's, there feels like there's more consequences and therefore it matters more and, and people put more pressure on themselves and it, it tends to be, to be tougher. So I think it's another chance to practice that skill set that we have of playing matches, of performing under pressure, of trying to get a little bit closer each day and each, each match towards that player that you're becoming and that player that you're striving to be. Um, and I think, so I, I think that's a big reason. And I think also, you know, we, we talk a lot in tennis about sort of having a, being able to play one point at a time and being able to take a, a point that has happened and put it behind us. Maybe we're losing in the match. Can we set that aside and play this next point? And I think we also want to have the approach of taking things one match at a time, right? Not carrying whatever has happened in that last match with us into the next one. And I think the the back draw is a great opportunity for us to do that because if we're playing in the back draw, that means we've lost a match and, you know, it gives us the opportunity to continue. Right. And again, again, you can see that in different ways. You could say, Hey, those, you know, those WTA ATP players don't have that, that same opportunity. Um, But yeah, you have the opportunity to continue. You have, you have the opportunity to, keep going you have the opportunity to bounce back after a loss and just like bouncing back after a point where you know hopefully you're using an in-between point routine and you're able to put that that point behind you um i think you know it's a it's a skill to be able to put a loss behind you and you know oftentimes maybe a player doesn't maybe they have an hour or they have, you know, not that long of a time to do that. So can we view this as a challenge of, okay, what do I need to do in this period of time to set myself up mentally to play another match now? And maybe it's a, some sort of a shortened format, um, but it's it's another match that you have against another player who, you know, is in, a, is in the same situation. Um, but I, I think, it, you know, in these situations, again, Maybe people are more likely to be frustrated or disappointed at that point, but it's a great opportunity. It's a great opportunity to get another match in and to keep building on this skill set that we're really trying to develop of being the best competitor we can be, the best player we can be. And I think being able to bounce back from defeat is a huge part of that and can actually lead to a lot of confidence. Maybe we had a first round match that didn't go so well. We lost in the first round, but we're able that we, we go into the constellation. We're able to win one, two, three matches um, and, you know, get some wins, play some better tennis. You know, maybe that first match we were really nervous or tense and we didn't play our best, or maybe, you know, for some other reason we didn't play our best or we came up against the number one seed. Um, so whatever the circumstances, it gives us more opportunities to play. Um, and I think that's that's huge, and we we don't want to disregard that, and we want to really be able to see this, you know, this as an opportunity or a challenge rather than, you know, and and I know you brought this up earlier, but rather than a a threat, rather than this is something that that can harm me in some way, harm my UTR, harm my reputation, my ego, um, but instead, you know, I I ultimately have a lot to gain from this. For sure, you know, and I think um, in terms of a selling point practicing various situations here is, is a good one. And again, we, I think we would have to bring this whole thing back to we're trying to develop a player into the best that he or she can be. We're not there yet. This weekend is an opportunity to make progress in closing the gap between where you are right now and where you want to be in the future. And by declining uh, the opportunity to play another match, um, you're missing out on that improvement opportunity, the ability to close the gap. Because there's so many things they could practice, and you named a bunch. Um, but first of all, just even just practicing matches and getting better and better at learning how to win sets, winning two of them. Um, there's so many different situations that can come up in those matches, learning to be better about the different stages of a match, um, getting through the initial part the middle part of the set, closing aspects of 
matches and sets. A lot to practice there. It's an opportunity to practice playing maybe people who are lower rated than you. Maybe that, you know, that hypothetical you're supposed to win match. Well, that's going to happen in main draws too. So this is an opportunity to, you know, really bring your focus in and focus on yourself and what you can control and and try to take care of business in that match. Um, it can be an opportunity to play a lot of matches in, in one weekend just to build up your endurance and your stamina, um, to build up knowing what to do between matches. That'll help you if you are in future tournaments and you're in the main draw a long time. You'll know how to manage that energy. Um, so there, I think there are so many things that can be practiced here uh, that need to be emphasized as we're not just playing to win the main draw. We're, we're, remember, competition is a process of learning and improvement. And we have to see it that way. So when you enter a tournament, the goal is to understand what did I learn this weekend? And, um, you know, did, how did I do with my goals? Did I improve? Did I make some progress? on closing the gap between where I am and, and where I want to be. And, you know, more match play opportunities is going to help with that. Um, I would also say that, and maybe this is some stuff that needs to be sort of handled outside of just the, the actual term environment, but competitive people play the backdrop. When we look at what it means to be competitive, competitive people enjoy playing. When they lose, their first instinct is not to go home. The first instinct should be, okay, yeah, I can be disappointed, but I want to go back out there and and try again. And so if you're someone who believes you're competitive or your or your child is competitive, really have to emphasize that aspect of it, right? So I think this is a great way to develop being more competitive is by encouraging people to play in the backdrop. Uh, as you said, you can still earn ranking points. Um, you know, one player I work with, who has been very good about this, Josh. Um, you know, sometimes he'll lose in the first or second round, and then we'll we'll talk. And part of the incentive that we go over is, okay, let's get to the last day of the tournament. Let's be some of the last people at the facility on the third or the fourth day. It's a good feeling, whether you're in the main draw or the back draw, that you're still there. And if you win the back draw, you're one of two people that goes home with a win, right? You have one loss, and then, then the person who, had, who had won the main draw has, has no losses for the weekend. So I think there's also a certain amount of pride of being able to get through all those matches and be able to come out on top, and you will learn so much through that process. Um, so I think there, there are a lot of benefits to this. You could even certainly increase your UTR through this process. I know we as humans tend to think of what we have to lose more than what we have to gain, um, but we could gain ranking points. We could actually improve our UTR. Um, we will most likely learn things, um, make improvements to our own game, maybe based on some simple goals that you're working on with your coach or with your, um, your, your mental coach make some progress on all of those things. It's just another opportunity to be out in the arena and practicing this stuff. It can't just be about this one weekend in the main draw. Um, you know, as we've said previously, and you were using the word, Josh, you know, challenge. Challenge is a great word because challenge is how we all become stronger people, stronger character. And we can be proud of ourselves when we go out there and, and, address these challenges and embrace them and take them on. And, um, um, you know, maybe you're, uh, you, you, you're one, I think one of my adult level players said this, I had never heard this before, but I thought this was actually pretty, pretty funny. He said, uh, you know, the last thing you want to do in a tournament is go one, two barbecue, meaning you lost <laughs> your first round, you lost your console match. And now all you got left is the barbecue for the, the tournament. Right. But, um, even if you do that, at least you're getting, more than one match, right? Um, and I would say the last thing, a reason to do this is as a group of tennis players, as a community of tennis players, um, there's a certain, to me, obligation or commitment 
to the community that we play these, to give even our fellow competitors opportunities to practice and improve. Tennis doesn't work as a solo sport, meaning if you're the only one on the court, nothing, nothing happens there. It's boring. You hit a ball over the net, doesn't come back. So we need each other to really uh, push and challenge and, and improve. So um, I don't know if you have any comments, Josh, on that before we kind of get into the, the last part of this about how to prepare for this. I think there's a lot of – I think you brought up a lot of good points. I, I did want to go back to one one thing that you said earlier um, about a lot of players struggling to – perform when they're maybe playing somebody who's right rated or ranked lower than them. Um, and I hear this all the time that, you know, I, Hey, I'm, I'm, when I'm playing somebody who's rated higher than me, they have a one point higher UTR than me. I have, I feel no pressure. I have nothing to lose. And then some of the same players tells me, yeah, when I playing somebody who's rated lower, I do feel pressure because I'm, I'm supposed to win. I, I should win. Right. And and I think when we when we hear words like that, I should, I'm supposed to, I need to, I have to. Um, I think our you know, our our red alert should be coming up. Like, okay, can can we notice these words as people are saying them, as we're saying them to ourselves? Um, because ultimately these are the types of things that that put pressure on us. These are, you know, expectations. Um and, you know, I, I get where that comes from. And sometimes that can also come from the people around us, whether that's parents or coaches or peers. Um, but a lot of people feel when they have these matches where they feel like they're supposed to win or should win against somebody who's maybe rated lower than them or they've beaten in the past, then that can be that can lead to a lot of pressure. That can lead to a lot of pressure. and It could be tough to play because, again, you're more focused on what you have to lose rather, you know, if you should win. I don't have much to gain, right? But but I have everything to lose. So it is a, a good opportunity to practice in those situations where I think a lot of people struggle bringing out their best game. Um, so it, it's another opportunity to practice that skill set where maybe, you know, in the main draw, you know, maybe you play people whose UTRs are lower, UTRs are higher, but maybe in the back draw, there's more opportunities like that. And I think if viewed in the right way, it's a it's another chance to really build build that skill set. So I think I just wanted to add that in because I think for a lot of people they feel similarly in terms of the the pressure. You know, when they play somebody whose UTR or ranking for that matter is lower than theirs, and you know that's a it's another skill to be built in terms of. How do we handle that pressure? How do we still want to play, right? You know, sometimes people will abandon their playing style that, you know, maybe they tend to play more aggressively and they'll start, you know, kind of waiting for their opponent to miss um, more so, uh, or they'll just, you know, radically make changes in their in their playing style in terms of, you know, what they do well. So I think it, it really is another opportunity there. And I, yeah, I, I like some of the things that you were bringing up, Brian, in terms of, you know, let's not, lose twice let's you know can this be an, a challenge or an opportunity for us to be one of the two people one of the only two people in the tournament that finishes the match with the win um you know we yeah and it's very rare right you think about a grand slam and 127 of those 128 singles players and their end their tournament with a loss one out of the 128 ended with a win so you know in a in a USTA tournament, let's just say, um, you know, draws, well, depending on the, the type of tournament, but can can, can be smaller, um, but still one of the players wins the main draw. So can you be the player that, that wins the back draw? Can you get some wins and can you earn that that right to end the tournament with a win, not with a withdrawal? For sure. Yeah. No, I think um, you're absolutely right. And I think you know, maybe even in terms of preparing for the event, specifically discussing that situation in which you may play someone who is below you, UTR or whatever rating system is being used in your particular country, um, and reframing it to understand what are the benefits. Because 
we all have a natural bias towards loss aversion and what we have to lose. Can we reframe it to what the benefits are? And I think we've talked about some of those in terms of improvement, learning, uh, et cetera. Um, so before a tournament begins, I think there are some things, and I want to get your thoughts on this too, Josh, that coaches, parents, maybe mental coaches need to uh, address uh, as a process for how we're going to approach a tournament. And I would say the first one is um, that we commit to playing the backdrop. We commit to playing consolation matches um, and that the message to the player is you are expected to play. You could have a devastating loss, um, but this is an opportunity to work on your true competitiveness. This is an opportunity to work on a lot of different things. And um, the expectation is that you will play and that you're going to commit to play. So what do you think of that? I, I agree. I agree. I, again, there are extenuating circumstances if somebody has an injury. Right. If somebody, yeah, is can't physically go on, you know, maybe they're maybe it's cramps, maybe it's you know absolute exhaustion from the heat. You know, there there are some maybe some circumstances that where somebody's physically not capable of going out there, or it's actually a real risk. But I think in general, I think that's excellent guidance yeah and i think that's one thing parents and coaches have to be united on i think a lot of the coaches that i associate with are fully on board with that but yet sometimes the player gets to pull out and that's you know why why did they get to do that when they could have played and they if they were still in the main draw they would have played right um so yeah, I agree. The exception is, you know, if there is an injury or there's some danger there, maybe there's an overplaying thing. Um, but again, if you would have stuck it out in the main draw, you should probably stick it out in the the consolation draw. Um, and I think this is a really this is a great opportunity for players and coaches to cover with, I'm sorry, uh, parents and coaches to cover with players the value and the importance of of this. Um, and the more that we talk about that, that process, what we are trying to get out of this weekend, you know, and for me, Josh, I tell a lot of my players, um, you know, of course I want you to win, but the most important thing to me is that you come out of the weekend with some things that you've learned about yourself, about your tennis game, um, you know, just building self-awareness and self-knowledge. That to me is way more important than you winning the tournament because you, you could win a tournament and play completely the wrong way or acting badly or all that other stuff. And you you don't actually close the gap between where you are and, and where you want to be. You may plateau. It may get worse. Um, so that's the most important thing is not that you want it, especially as a junior player, is that you're doing all of the little things at a high standard, at a high level. And that through that process, what are you learning? Um, so that we can be better in the in the next tournament. Maybe we, you know, we translate that into having just a great year, great season. Uh, but we take it just one event at a time, and we try to get the most out of each one. Playing one match and leaving, it's hard to say that we got a lot out of that. And like you said earlier, you know, this is an opportunity to bounce back, play better, right? Very often, we do play better in the second match of a tournament. You're in it. Those first match jitters are gone. Great opportunity to recover. So I think that there's a lot of sort of pre-work that can be done between parents and coaches and emphasizing um, why we should do this and what the benefits are. Totally. And, you know, especially at some of these tournaments where maybe it's a bigger tournament or it's further away. Um, it's a lot that goes into playing in a tournament, right? It's a lot of time. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of, you know, energy that, that goes into um, the player and sometimes, you know, other people, whether it's, you know, the parents or maybe it's a coach or other people that are, you know, spending their time, energy resources going to the tournament, right? So if you're going to go and play one match and, and then leave compared to playing in a match, 
you know, or, or maybe you lose in the second or third round or whatever it is, but you have the chance to play in the consolation. And yeah, maybe that's where you get a big win. Maybe that's where you, you know, you, you build momentum. Um, and, but I, I think, you know, I, I think it does take that unified approach of coaches, parents, you know, players being on the same page of understanding that this is, these are simply more matches, you know, it's, yes, it's different. You know, it, maybe it feels a little bit different because, you know, you, you've, you've lost a match at that point. You don't have a chance to, to win the, the main draw, but that these matches matter and that these matches need to really be um, viewed with the same level of seriousness and, and, you know, viewing it as an opportunity, right? Maybe there's not as many ranking points on the line, but with, you know, with, with UTR, it, it's certainly a chance to, you know, Im- improve in that way. And with your game itself, with your, you know, your tactics, with your mental game, with your endurance, as you brought up, um, I think with, with all these different areas, there's a lot to be gained, a lot of benefits from that. But I think, in terms of that unified approach and in terms of what pe- people can do ahead of time, yeah, having conversations like like what we're talking about right now, but having conversations between the support staff of a player is really critical. Um, even, you know, even, be, you know, visualization could be could be a tool that somebody uses, right? Can we vision? And, and you know, maybe we don't want to visualize ourselves losing per se, but can we visualize ourselves bouncing back from, from being upset and disappointed after a loss and saying, okay, you have 55 minutes until your next match starts. What, what, you know, what are you going to do about it? Can we plan out or visualize what our response is going to be during that hour break? Can we, you know, what, what do you want to have in your bag during that time? How do you want to be physically recovering? Um, and then what, what sort of a mindset do you want to have going into that match, right? Like, I think, you know, we've been more so addressing this about withdrawals and people withdrawing from tournaments, not playing in matches in the back draw. But the, the other thing is sometimes, you know, people will tank in those matches. Somebody's still upset about the loss that they had. And maybe they're not happy that they're out there. Or they don't want to be out there. And they end up tanking. And they end up not giving their best effort, or maybe they start with a good effort and then, you know, something changes along the way or they go down in the first set and they just throw in the towel and they, they start tanking. So I think, um, you know, that's certainly something else we can address and think about and, you know, for, for people to be aware of because, um, yeah, that's, that's it also what we want to be avoiding. We, we don't want to be in a situation where just because we've lost once, we're hampering our chances in other matches, right? Like, and carrying maybe that negativity or that frustration, that disappointment from the previous match, um, you know, can we reset? Can we come into each match with a blank slate, regardless of if it's in the main draw, back draw, whether it's someone rated or ranked higher or lower than us, can we go in with you know, a blank slate, be able to reset. But I think in order to do that, we have to prepare for that. We have to think through this possibility and plan out our response for how we want to handle this situation. And not only visualization, but perhaps there are some trigger words or phrases or a script that we develop ahead of time. That is sort of our mantra with respect to the backdraw that, as you said, Josh, gets us in the right mindset. Uh, because yeah, the the concern with tanking is is totally valid, and that doesn't help anybody. Um, you know, your opponent might be happy, but then again, you didn't really challenge your opponent at, at a certain stage, and uh, they didn't grow either through this process. Other than they were tougher than maybe the player who tanked and and to stick it out. So uh, yeah, I think really preparing once you're once you have lost, and you know. It, it, it is key to what are we going to do between if we have committed to make sure that we are going out there with our, our best effort. We're focusing on uh, executing all those little things within our control at a high level um, and treating it as a separate match and not a continuation of maybe the emotional journey from the first one. So, yeah, that's a really good good point. Actually, even Julie Davidson brought that up in her email that that is one of the responses that that they sometimes see 
uh, from players is that they, yeah, they may play it, but then they tank. And, um, you know, there are certainly reasons why we don't want players to do that. It doesn't benefit anybody, but it also doesn't speak highly of the player and, and how they prepared for that. Totally, totally. And, you know, I, I think it's, yeah, I, I think if, if somebody is able to move past that loss, move past whatever happened, you know, there's, the, you you can end up viewing these consolation matches as a chance to, you know, I don't want to say redeem yourself or put it in sort of the... That's the word that came to my the, mind, is a sort of a redemption. Yeah. But- yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, if, if you want to think of it like that or something similar to that, but it's it's a chance to put that that last match behind you and have a really positive finish to the tournament. Yeah. Right? If if you can win a match, if you can win a few matches, if you can battle hard and lose but really feel like hey, I gave it my all. I had maybe a much better effort, much better attitude in that in those consolation matches compared to my main draw match or matches, um, that's a win. That's something that you can build on and, and grow from. So um, yeah, I think being able to view it in that way is, is really, really key. Yeah, I agree. So, well, I want to thank uh, Julie Davidson of the Davidson Tennis Academy in Virginia for sending in this topic. And uh, I think it generated a lot of good, good thoughts and conversation for us, Josh. And um, so again, thank, thank you, Julie. Um, Well, that's our show for today. Uh, For more on today's episode, please check out the show notes. If you have any feedback or questions for us, please email us at tennisiqpodcast at gmail.com. You can also use the Twitter hashtag tennisiq. Additionally, please subscribe to the show on your podcast platform of choice, including YouTube, so you can be notified of new episodes. You can also check us out on Instagram. If you would like to support the podcast, please visit our Patreon page at patreon.com slash tennisiq slash membership. Thanks again, and we'll talk to you soon in our next episode.